Here's Brody Brazil. Let me say first that I hope this is okay to use a clip from David Sampson's YouTube channel because he recently published a video and the last few minutes of it were absolutely mind-blowing. What he said, how he said it, what he's suggesting, how it all was laid out truly caught my attention and I'll play it for you here in just a second, but I wanted to share it. I also wanted to, wanted to interject just a little bit here and there with some reactions, some personal thoughts and comments, not necessarily to uh, criticize what he's saying, but kind of to add to the conversation. But let me also throw this in there that I really do respect and appreciate his interest over time in the A's situation. Again, obviously, he's in the media side of things and he's looking for interesting discussions, but he's on the opposite coast and he's using his experience from the Marlins front office and being their team president, relating it to what's going on right now with the Oakland A's, Major League Baseball, Las Vegas and the city of Oakland. So, again, somebody who is thousands of miles away has dedicated his time and attention to this topic. And I do really appreciate that on the national level. Okay, without further delay, here is what David recently said. Will Oakland get an expansion team? They may. Okay, first reaction. Was that five seconds in? I like his optimism on that. And at first, months ago, I thought that was way off the table. But as we get farther along here and things make a little bit more sense, I actually agree with that sentiment more than I ever have. But here's the funny thing about what's happening in November. There will be a relocation vote and it will pass. Whoa. He said that with a lot of certainty and a lot of confidence. And he didn't mince words right there. However, oh. even with the relocation vote and even with it passing, yes, it still doesn't mean that the A's are moving to Vegas. What? <laughs> we have been trained all along that there's a process here and that really the last thing in the process is baseball owners approving relocation to the tune of 75%. And once that's done, the public financing has already been taken care of or the public uh, contribution that this is a done deal. This is the last ultimate hurdle. But here's somebody from the inside telling you that it's actually not. Here's why. Now that may sound counterintuitive and I may be the only voice in the media to say this, but let me explain. Please do, right? How, how could you say that? That a vote is passed, everybody approves it, why couldn't they absolutely move forward the next day? When Rob Manford is telling you about the problem that could happen with the referendum. And you've seen videos about that here on the channel, the Schools Over Stadiums group, is trying to collect signatures. They need 102,000 by this upcoming summer. If they get that, there will be a referendum vote on the table November 2024 with the election in the state of Nevada, which would be before necessarily demolition of the old Tropicana Hotel. It would also be well before groundbreaking of construction on a new A's ballpark at that site. So all of a sudden, this referendum vote would take place before the other important parts of the project moving forward in schools over stadiums is really pushing for that $380 million to disappear. What he's saying is if we lose the $380 million from the state, the local authorities are gonna to have to come up with it because the deal will not make sense to John Fisher to put an extra $380 million into it. So it's not ultimately a decision of, yes, we're all good, we have everything we need, we're good to go. It's more of a flex. It's more of a power move to say, well, Nevada, we've approved this, and you've promised 380, despite what the general public might do and taking a vote and having it go away. So if it's going to go away, you also need to figure out another way to come up with $380 million. You can come up with 30 million. You can find a way to maneuver 75 million. But, but wait a second, wait a second. How far away was Howard Terminal from being a reality? How far away were we with infrastructure money? Wasn't it like... 30, 40, 50. I mean, the number was always changing, but weren't we somewhere between 30 and 70 million? And David just said, those are marginal numbers. You can come up with that stuff. So I know I'm, I'm going back in time a little bit there, but 
Interesting how that's a perspective here, but maybe for the A's in Howard Terminal, it wasn't. So those, are num those numbers are smaller, obviously, but... The economics of a stadium deal, when your contribution has to go up by 380 and it gets delayed by yet an extra year, no less. Oh, good. By the way, good mic technique. Had to do the cough, and I'm not sorry to pause it right there. Here, okay, there you go. Um, that's, that's an expert broadcasting move, the old cough switch. Even I don't get to that sometimes. Because that's the reality of what this referendum would mean in Vegas. It would mean another delay. Yes. And another hole in financing a big one 380 million dollars of a project that's anywhere between 1.5 to start but probably more like two when it ultimately gets completed if it does and goldman sachs or jp morgan or whatever shop is doing their financing and i think it's goldman sachs and i think it's at a high interest rate which is crazy that we don't know that yet maybe we might find that out in the very near future officially Again, when you apply for a loan with a bank, I mean, usually you need to show them for a construction loan, blueprints, the contractor needs to be involved, insurance all squared away. I guess this is totally different when you're getting public money for a construction project. Whether you think Fisher's family can afford another 380 or not, not relevant. The capital markets will not avail themselves. The team will not be able to secure an extra $380 million. They're going to need partners. They're going to need to sell equity. They're going to need to do something other than what can happen quickly. So, and I didn't mean to cut them off and pause there, but I think that's, that's the point, right? If, if the 380 goes away, doesn't necessarily mean the entire project goes away, but they're going to have to take a detour. They're going to have to go a different route, do some things they weren't counting on, weren't expecting. I think that's very clear. Also add in, yeah, the delay because... Now we're talking November 2024, you're not even certain, but maybe it wouldn't be that much of a delay. Maybe groundbreaking or, or demolition doesn't start until early 25, and, but maybe you're a, yeah, but I take it back. Maybe you are a year late. Yikes. Now you're talking 2029 for Las Vegas. That's the reason why that even after a relocation vote and wait to see, by the way, official wait to see, the relocation vote will not get delayed. He's very confident on that. November 14th through the 16th, those owners' meetings right around the corner in Arlington, Texas. It's going to happen during the November owners' meetings, even though we're all calling for it to be delayed because we don't think that it's a fully baked relocation packet. Well, and that's been a, the source of a lot of videos here on this channel, just asking questions. And I understand people in Las Vegas, they don't want to hear those questions. I mean, the... The few supporters we've seen, the few people who are really interested in baseball, the A's coming their direction. But, I mean, there are some relevant questions here that should be pretty basic, should be pretty obvious. And maybe the answers are right around the corner. But up to this point, for many months, they've yet to be addressed. We don't think that the other owners have enough information. We don't think that there's enough of a design of the stadium or an understanding of the budget or an understanding of their pro formas, their financials. We don't know enough about the timeline. We don't yet know where they're going to play in the interim period. And Rob Manford said that directly. We don't know any of those things. That's all true. And the temporary location, by the way, the 2025 through 28 thing or 27 thing, I'm still so lost on that. I'm not hearing much from the Oakland side about staying at the Coliseum, not hearing anything about potentially playing at Oracle Park. The minor league stadiums seem like they're farther than ever from being a possibility or a reality. Are we going to get a total wild card here? A's playing half their or all their season at Angel Stadium, T-Mobile Park, Coors Field? I have no clue. Yet, there is a reason that MLB wants to get the vote done. Good they cough. want to. Oh, good cough. They want to send a message to Vegas. Mm. They want to send a message to Oakland, oh. and they want to get this over with because this off season should be dominated by Otani's free agency. <gasps> oh no! The... Wait a second. Now we're we're rushing this. 
we're trying to get it over with because it's like, oh, it's the easy thing to do, right? And I've, I've been worried about that. As one of the things here, it's the easy thing for owners to just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of this. Just do it, get it over with. Even though it's not fully considered or all the details aren't there, just, just rush this through. We want to get on to the next thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if, to some extent, it is like that. Excitement of a season upcoming, enough of all of this stadium drama. That's why in the first owners meeting after the World Series, the relocation of the Oakland A's will be voted on and it will pass. Again, not so much to say yes to the A's, but more to say yes for now, so long as you, state of Nevada, you come through with what you promised. You made a promise. And if it goes away, we're going to hold you to that promise. Again, this is more of a a flex, a strong arm. I don't, I don't know the right, right term I'm searching for here, but a power move. This is more of a power move. And again, we've been trained all along to think that this was the ultimate final step. And after this, nothing could stop it. But here we go into that dangerous limbo situation again. Nothing is a hundred thousand million percent secure until I guess shovels are in the ground. Oh, <laughs> that was the end of the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil, you dummy. Anyway, I think David makes some compelling points there, saying some interesting things, something that I hadn't yet thought of. And again, I could have made the video with the keynote and the, the topic points, but I, I just wanted you to hear it the way he said it, the way he spelled it out, give his opinions, and I could interject a little bit to it. My reaction to this, I don't think he's way off at all. I think it's a possibility. I think the other obvious possibility is that, to his point earlier, the owners look at this and say, we're, we're just not even ready to do this vote yet. And they may ultimately vote yes on it, but just not today because it's not, it's not complete. You turn in a, a paper in college and it doesn't get the A, B, C, D, or F. It gets an I for incomplete, just not done. Maybe. But he's got a lot of background and experience and insight, and he's telling us right now that it's going to happen and it's going to pass, but that doesn't necessarily mean the end result will take place. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can definitely see you back here next time. <laughs>